Hi, I'm John Hollier. I'm currently the president of HMGS Incorporated. Um, we're here at Historicon 2021, our first convention in 18 months or so. Our expectations coming into it were that we would, we wanted to exceed what we did in Fall In in 2019. So um, that was around 1,500 people, and we wanted to do better than that. We didn't think we could do as well as a Cold, a Cold Wars convention, and we definitely didn't think we could do as well as a summertime Historicon convention. Um, we are very happy with the numbers that we've got right now. I haven't seen the additional numbers for today, but as of last night, we were, we were at, at the fall-in level. So we obviously have exceeded it with the walk-ins today. The other good feedback is the exhibitors. Um, yes, some of the exhibitors are not here, but the exhibitors who are here, the feedback I've, I've gotten so far is that they're doing very well. Um, I put that down to, oh my God, I don't have any work left to do. I've, I've got rid of my lead pile. I need a new project, you know, so you've got all of this people starting and looking for new things. So um, that's good. I think so far it's been a great convention. I've had a lot of people come up to me and say they're having a great time and, and it's really good to be back. And that's really what we wanted. We wanted to come back with as, as good a convention as we could based on the fact that, you know, it's been 18 months you know, of not seeing each other. So I'm glad to see you guys. I'm glad to see everybody else. I'm glad that you're here. The, the biggest challenge I think we have is what do we want to be when we grow up? Um, and by that I mean what the, the membership, everybody's talked about this, the membership is aging. The hobby isn't aging, but the membership is aging. So do we want to be a you know, 2,000, 3,000 membership organization that runs three conventions a year? Or are we better off having a smaller membership and doing something else? How many conventions should we actually have? So it's a question of what our business model needs to look like moving forward in terms of how many members, what that whole picture looks like. Um, the other big challenge that, that is a personal one for, for me is, and one of the reasons that I got on the board, is that we, because we change people so often on the board and we're all volunteers, um, there's lack of what I call corporate knowledge. How do we do things? How do we do things consistently? Um, so that one of the big pushes that I've got is for people who are on the board or doing things is to get those process protocols policies written down. Um, we're fortunate that as a nonprofit we were able to get a Google um, suite, Google Workplace um, account for free. Um, all of our um, major, you know, the directors and the, the uh, convention directors and a lot of other people have accounts there. So as part of that we've got, you know, Google Drive so we're putting files up there so that whoever comes behind me has got all that knowledge. They don't have to go asking 17 people, like, what do, what do you do to this? Why do you do that? Um, you know, the, so that, that for me is a big piece of it. Um, the other thing is that I've started conversations with the exhibitors. Um, I want to have a different relationship with them. I want to have one where it's more inclusive. I want to see how we can do things with them um, there are some that sponsor things, like Battlefront sponsors the Flames of War uh, tournament, but there are not a lot of uh, things going on that are exhibit hall related and game related. You know, there are a few people who are doing things. Joby started the demo space in the exhibit hall in 2019. That's been very popular. So it's doing some things like that. Um, I want to recognize the people who are working for us, uh, the game masters, people, you know, you, you guys are running a bunch of games here. Um, it has to be more than just, oh, you got in for free. You know, I'm not saying it's going to be monetary compensation or, or anything like that, but we've got to be acknowledging it. And then the other thing is the guys who run the great games, the guys who get, you know, game of the convention or game master of the year, we should be recognizing them. The, at the next convention at the, or at the next three conventions, giving them a pride of place. I don't know whether you guys um, saw some of the stuff that Duke Seafried used to do, mm -hmm. the big mega games down in the lobby. Well, you know, you're Game Master of the Year, that's what you get. You get that pride of place, you get the place to, to, to show off. Um, to do some of the things that I want to do requires the membership to be more involved. 
So I'm, we're looking and talking about ways to get the membership involved to more than just the 20 or 30 people who work outside of the conventions and, and get more people involved. Because we need, we need skill sets that we don't have on the board and in that small number of other people that work with us. So, you know, marketing, social media, um, that's a big piece of making, for us to be able to go out there and promote ourselves to people and not have to listen to the stories of, I didn't know this a hobby even existed from a 40 year old guy. You know, I mean, everybody talks about what are we doing for the kids and we're doing, you know, our education pieces aimed at high schools and colleges. But what about the 20 year olds, the 30 year olds, you know, who we're not really addressing at this point. So, um, you know, we're looking at how much additional outreach we can do, what kinds of outreach we can do. The board had a uh, all day planning session. Um, we all actually came together uh, on site um, here back in September. So that was a kickoff really for a lot of the spitballing, blue sky, what can we do? What pieces should we be looking at? And some of the things that have come out of that are things that are now, we started conversations with uh, different sets of the community about. So um, I wouldn't even say those seeds are little green shoots yet. They're, they're still like under the earth and we're, we're, we're watering, watering them to try to get them to sprout. So um, I don't wanna promise anything in terms of, of whether we'll actually be able to bring any of those things to the table. Um, the, so the, I think that's the main things. I mean, I, there's just so much in going on and so much that needs to be done um, that it's, even hard for me to remember sometimes what's, what, what all the things are on the list. So um, the, I think the convention piece of it, uh, we really want to figure that piece out in terms of what that footprint looks like. You know, do we have one mega convention where we really turn it into a, you know, five, 7,000, 10,000 person event um, in the summertime? Um, and then do smaller ones around the country, you know, or at least around our area. Um, at other times, you know, does the three convention model really work for us at this point? Um, and that's one of the things that's very important that the, that the exhibitors are very important on input on. Like the question is like a for them, Cold Wars and Fall In are really a two-day convention because they're open for a half a day, a day, and a half a day and then Historic Art is a three-day convention. Does that extra day really buy them 50% more revenue? And, and it's that kind of conversation that we're having with them. So that to say, are we better off with a shorter convention? Should we add days? You know, so there's all those kind of questions that go into the mix at this point. So I'm gonna start with the, the easiest piece first. 2022 Historic Art, we'll be back at the Lancaster Convention Center in downtown Lancaster. We have a contractual relationship with them that goes through 2026. Um, it's, it, it, was very, it was very financially re sort of rewarding to do it that way. The increases are very small year to year and we can cancel at them, not at any time, but we've got enough time to cancel you know, 24, 25, 26 if, if we feel that we need to. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, I'm planning on Historicon being a bigger and better show than it was last time it was down there. Um, the, the Marriott has finished their, their tower, so they've got 100 extra rooms on site. They've finished their restaurant renovation, which was going on while we were there last time. Um, we've, we've dealt with some issues that we had in the contract with them in terms of we didn't have all of the space that we thought we were gonna have. Um, so we've dealt with all of those things and they're very happy to have us back. So the, the that's the, that's the easy one. Um, I'll go to probably the next easy one to talk about, and that's Fallen, um, which would be a year from now. Uh, we've, we go back and forth about Valley Forge as a location. That it has some challenges in terms of the way that it's spread out. I would like us to be a little bit more together. Um, I don't like this idea that the all of the games are in this building and the, and the exhibitors are in the other building. Uh, it's not, 
it's not an easy walk. It's 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 quite a quite a long arduous walk down that uh, t t tunnel. I won't call it the Bataan Death March, but sometimes it feels like it. Uh, and so we're looking at what are our options there, and the board will be meeting for its November meeting uh, next Sunday, not this Sunday, this weekend, but next weekend. Um, and that's one of the things on the agenda. So the, we will be making a decision about the location at that meeting. And there, there are a couple of different options that, that we're looking at. Um, Cold Wars has become problematic. To, and and the, big, the big problem is Adepticon. Um, the contract was written in a way where um, our show is now one week a week after Adepticon in Chicago. Um, for those of the viewers that don't know what Adepticon is, it's a big show in Chicago, lots of tournaments, but they just announced in September that they've taken more space. They were out of space in the Schomburg uh, Center where they were. They've taken some space in a hotel down the street, which is was a convention hotel for, for attendees. And they're moving their historical piece that, there and they're going to have somewhere like five or six times as much space. So they're really trying to build up their historical uh, events at that, at that time. So with that a week away, and then I would say probably 70 or 80 percent of our large vendors, people like Phalanx and Battlefront and Badger and Miniature, ba Miniature Building Authority, are going to go to Adepticon. They're not going to come to our event, no matter where it is. Okay, so we have to deal with that issue, uh, and the other part of it is we've got a, we've got a lot of not negative feedback, but just if it's in Ocean City, I'm not coming. You know, from from some of the major vendors. So we have to look at that and say, what do what do we want to do? Do we want to go ahead with that convention in Ocean City in um, the first weekend in April? knowing that we probably will end up losing money on it or is are we better off canceling that convention maybe taking a smaller financial hit and then moving on and focusing on um on historic arts. so those are those are the things that we're talking about and i realize that i hope that people realize that i'm trying to be very open and transparent with them about the issues that we're dealing with in terms of the facilities that we that we that we work with, because I don't want it to be oh my god they don't know what they're doing. No, we I think we know what we're doing. We're just facing and dealing with the challenges, and I'm willing to talk about what those challenges are before we've dealt with them, and not wait until we've resolved it and then finally tell you what the answer is. I don't know what some of the answers are yet. We're working on it. It's on the table. How many big conventions should we have? How many smaller conventions we should have, and where should they be? You know, that's all up for discussion, and that's partly what we started at the planning session in September. So, yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, when we talk about smaller conventions, I mean, we we're looking at ideas like, oh, maybe we'll run an an American Civil War themed convention, smaller, in Gettysburg. We could probably go back to the Eisenhower Center with a small convention like that. Maybe we'll do a Napoleonic convention somewhere. You know, maybe we could, you know, so we're looking at those things as options. Um, the other crazy brained idea that I have, which I floated to a few people. No, actually I can't talk about that. I gotta to talk to some other people before I talk about that. So you might wanna cut that piece out. Oh no, I'm leaving that piece in. <laughs> That's a great teaser right there. No, I, I think that we've, we're looking at how do, we, how do we size our conventions in a way that we can serve our community the best way, not only the community that we currently have, but the community that we want to have. So if we can, if we can go and talk to, and this is another crazy idea, but I don't mind talking about this one because it's, not, there's not anybody in our organization or our larger organization that needs to that I need to talk to first. Pax Unplugged in Philadelphia in December. They don't take the whole Philly Convention Center. Even if they didn't want us in their space, could we take a co-located space with them and say, 
hey, you're going to pack unplugged and you come to you want to come into our convention, you get it for free. So they were attracting board gamers, card gamers, you know, some people who maybe haven't even seen historical miniatures wargaming and, and the wonderful kind of things that people put on the tabletop. So it, it's that kind of idea that is when I talk about crazy ideas, that's sort of the things that I'm talking about. It's like, what can we do that breaks out of the box or it says, there isn't a box here, we're just gonna do something different. I certainly will listen to what people have to say about ideas. Um, and I'm, tr I'm hopeful that the rest of the board feel that way, I think they do. Um, but I'm, I will listen to your ideas, but be prepared that I will turn around to you and say, that's a great idea, why don't you take the lead on that? Okay, um, I did that at the exhibitor meeting on, on Thursday. Chris Bennett, when I asked them, how should we stay in touch as a, as a group? Chris Bennett said, oh, we should do it on the Discord server. I said, can you set that up? And he did, it, he had it set up the next morning. So now we have a Discord server where the exhibitors and the people who, man, you know, who interface with the exhibitors on our side can interact about ideas and stuff like that. And I've heard more ideas from them in the last two days than I think you know we've heard in a long time. So um, yeah, I, I, think, I think we're in a good place. I think that we can take advantage of some of the pent up demand that we have for, for our product, which is conventions. Um, I'm not ignoring the educational side of what we do. We, I think, I think you should do a whole other segment on that. Um, but we've got some great news on, on that side too. That that we, we've done some, we've done some structural things that have allowed us to bring more grant money in than we ever could in the past. So that uh, I, I like Jim to talk about that because Jim's the one who's done it, and, and I like him to get the credit for that. So yeah. Hi, uh, I'm Joe B. Miller. I'm convention director for this historic con, and I'm also now on the board as a, the convention operations officer. We exceeded my expectations for the show. Um, everyone seems to be having a good time. There's been a lot of positive feedback from the people who made it to the show. The exhibitors are, are doing well from what, from what feedback I've gotten. Um, on, uh, if you look online, a lot of the guys posting their game pictures and stuff online. So they're, they're just, it seems to be a real positive vibe despite, despite, you know, that it's not the ideal conditions. But like two or three weeks out, there was all sorts of stuff and we were worried that, well, maybe people aren't coming to the show. Um, it turned out not to be the case by the time the show got here. Um, and I have to admit, a lot, of the, a lot of the decisions I made leading up to the show were, were probably not the best decisions because we the attendance was much higher than than I thought it might be and so it, it did create some um, some challenges for us once we got here a priority for me is uh, getting our word out beyond HMGS a lot of the advertising uh, we've done previously is is to our database to our membership and, and word of mouth that way um, it it limits it, you know, it, it limits where the word gets out. It, there's, there hasn't been a show I've been to since even since I started volunteering where someone hasn't come up who lives in the community saying, you guys have been running shows here for how long? I didn't even know you were here. Um, so, so that needs to change. And I think uh, expanding what we offer needs to change as long as we have this space. I'm certainly not talking about removing historical games to replace them with fantasy or sci-fi or board games, that kind of stuff. But, but to, to choose facilities that have enough space where we can start offering those um, to people and get more people in. And then we can go to those communities and advertise, get those people to come to the show. And I can, and I can guarantee you, um, almost nobody starts with historical miniatures. They all grow into it. Um, and that's the way to get them to come to the show and see what they're missing. Because we've, it's a great, we've got some great events here and uh, th they just need to see it. I think they'll be hooked. I'd just like to thank everybody that did come out for this show. I know it wasn't ideal circumstances. Um, thank you to the GMs for putting in the hard work. Um, I, hope, I hope your games were full and, and you weren't disappointed. Uh, thanks to the exhibitors who might not, who might have been leery about coming out. 
um, not knowing what attendance was going to be, and uh, and for the volunteers who again stepped up to make sure that the show ran as as, good, as smoothly as possible for their, for our attendees. I'm John Spees. I'm the former president of HMGS. I just retired in July. Um, I found HMGS to be very very uh, supportive of getting the next generation of gamers into the hobby, so I was kind of passionate about that. I knew that after my six-year term was be up, I wanted something to do to keep involved. So COVID was basically the great opportunity for us since we didn't have the opportunity to run conventions. Uh, this was an opportunity to look into something that I had always wanted to do was to establish an education part of HMGS that was solely dedicated to just education and outreach. So what we did is in August of 2020, um, I put together another 501c nonprofit organization called HMGS Next Generation. It's completely separate from HMGS. It's Next Generation because it's our focus on education and outreach for the younger kids to get them involved in the hobby to keep us going. And what we do is we reach out to libraries, schools, after school gaming clubs to get everybody interested in historical miniature gaming. Kids are on their phones too much. We want to get back to the basics of getting them talking to each other, interacting with each other, and it's my opportunity to keep involved in the hobby and, and keep it going. So I am uh, Jim Stanton and I am on the HMGS board. I am in charge of I am the education and outreach director. I'm also on the HMGS Next Gen board. Uh, where I am the treasurer. And we've been, been talking with John, um, him and uh, Jared Fishman is also on the HMGS Next Gen board. Um, we've had successful programs with sending um, people, um, Jer again, Jared Fishman and um, uh, Manning, um, John Manning went to Yale, put on games, and we have Ye the guys from Yale here putting on two games this weekend. We've gone to Gardner, New York and run programming there um, a few weekends where we're taking great games. We've had 16 kids sign up with kids on a waiting list. And the real thing is, is to run a game for the kids to get them involved. Uh, one of one of our favorite students is Polly at, right. at Gardner Library. It's like, you know, that's the saying, don't mess with Polly. She's a little 10 year old <laughs> girl who just She's going to be the president of HMGS someday. She understands. How she to understands the charts. <laughs> you, know, you know, she looks at the charts and she's yeah. like, "I want that unit" because she saw what they can do. See that—that's our next step. Is with the younger kids. Obviously, they're not coming to conventions anytime soon. But we want to get that familiarity. We keep running get, we, programming there on a quarterly basis, uh, eventually a monthly basis, and this is why we need new facilitators to help us out because we can't carry right. the load by ourselves. So in the bottom line is anybody, anybody watching this, just contact uh, uh, HMGS, um, education at hmgs.org, drop me an email or outreach or go to the next gen site, um, there's contact information on there, and just let's get yourself involved and, and we can help you out with um, we're getting all kinds of knowledge, uh, um, a whole bunch of uh, resources together that we can send out to people, and and we're putting a page together. Is here's you know when you approach your local library, these are the keywords that they're looking to hear, and different things like that. Not to trick them, but it's just the stuff that needs to, you know, needs to be said so they understand where you're coming from. Um, and then you know we also have some grant opportunities that I can send you a Google form and you're going to fill it out and hopefully we can get you see some seed money for what you're starting to do. So that's where, that's where you go. And really, if you're out there and you're watching this, and which means you're interested in the hobby and you want to find out about us, contact us and we'll get you set up and go out there and start growing the hobby. <laughs>